I paddle down rivers, there are two things that I've always got my eye out for. One are dangers, and two are escape routes. Look at the rock that I've circled. This is an example of a feature that we would want to avoid. See the two eddies I've circled? Those are our escape routes, and they would make an excellent place to scout this danger and plan our next move. See if you can spot the mistake in these next few strokes. Did you spot the mistake? That's right, he failed to maintain good boat speed. He's not going faster or slower than the river. He's going the same speed. So he's out of control. At this moment, our paddler is just two strokes from safety of the eddy on the right, the eddy I've circled on the right. But our paddler has missed a stroke and you can see that his hand is slid down to his other hand. If it were me in this situation, I would be frantically trying to slow this boat down. Uh, really, he only needs to get the boat a few feet over to where the orange arrow is to get back into the main flow to get around this rock. Uh, but ideally, he would slow this boat down and then push it into the eddy that I've circled on the right. Uh, it's, it would also be possible, if he could get the boat to stop here, uh, to go around on the left. Although, there's another rock on the left side that without prior knowledge could also be dangerous. So I would be shooting for the eddy on the right. So this is the most important frame in this video. Uh, you can see I've put a little orange arrow there to show which way he's leaning the boat. Um, but he's leaning upstream and he has his paddle on the downstream side um, and he's about to run into this rock. So the instant he touches this rock with this boat angle and with the paddle where it is, He's just going to capsize. There's no question about it. Um, there's a rule that you know the rock is your friend. So at the very least, he should be leaning down into it so that the water flows under the boat as he collides with the rock, rather than catching his upstream edge and flipping him upside down. Um, that's a major mistake. The other thing to look at here, uh, and the reason that this is the most important frame, is look at the pillow of water going up against this rock. Okay, this rock is in the middle of the main flow of current in this river and it just has a tiny little bit of a curler at the top. Um, if this rock was a solid rock, all right, there would be a big foam pile here. It would be at least a foot and a half tall of just pure white rolling foamy aerated water. Uh, this has just a tiny little curler and you can see it's green water almost all the way up to the edge of the rock. Um, and this is a big indicator that that rock is undercut or that there's a cave underneath it or somehow the water is going underneath that rock and f or flowing around it in a way that could be dangerous under the water. And as we're going to see in a second, that is exactly the case with this rock. At this point, our paddler can definitely feel that there's a current sucking him down. And if you ever are in a situation like this, you need to get out of your boat immediately, immediately. Um, it's going to be chaos as soon as you do. So, you know, some people will say try to go upstream of your boat. Some will say try to go downstream of your boat, whatever. Uh, in my experience, in a situation like this, you want to get as far away from your boat as you can. So kick yourself out and kick away from that boat and try to kick to the sides or away from what are the direction of the, the pull of the current. Um, if you you know if you can if you can break free, uh, you've got a chance. Because if you don't, if you fail in this task of kicking out of your boat, or, or, you know, getting away from this terrible sieve that you're getting pulled into, uh, this is probably this frame here will probably be the last thing that you ever see. So our paddler was actually not terribly slow. Uh, realizing that he needed to eject, but he, st he still waited too long. He's already down way under the water, in, into the caves, getting sucked into the cave before he gets his hand on a spray skirt. Um, and a lot of times, you know, these undercuts and things like that, uh, you're much more likely to get pinned if you're in your boat. If you come out of your boat, then, you know, the size of the hole necessary f for you to be able to pass through is significantly smaller. Uh, so he just got incredibly lucky here that uh, he wasn't he didn't get pinned before he got out of his boat and that the hole that he went through was big enough for him to go through.
So I just wanted to reiterate that this paddler is making three mistakes. One, you can see that he's allowed his paddle to bounce in his hands. So his right hand is in the middle of the paddle and it's out of control. The other, um, a second one, if the left side of the boat is frothy white water and the right side of the boat is relatively smooth green water. Uh, so you, you can see there's a seam, a line that goes right to the dangerous rock, the circle in the middle of the river. Um, and this is the most unstable place to be. Even an experienced paddler would have difficulty maintaining balance exactly on that line. Uh, and the reason that he's there is because he has no boat speed. That's his third mistake. Uh, he, when you're in a kayak, you need to be going faster or slower than the water around you to maintain control. So let's watch this again. Uh, and just end to end a few times and just let it sink in. Okay, let's watch the whole thing and see how many mistakes you can spot. Well, that's it guys. I hope you found this useful and stay safe out there.